You were in uh, the Supreme Court chamber today listening to that argument. I think I feel I should be addressing you as Professor Porter tonight in your law professor role. Uh, what you, you spent years as a law student studying Supreme Court uh, uh, cases and years as a law professor teaching Supreme Court cases. What do you make of today's? It was incredibly impressive to see the way that the government's lawyer responded to a number of challenging and difficult questions from lots of different justices. One of the things that made me feel, um, as someone who deals daily with a dysfunctional Congress, is grateful that we still seem to have um, some amazing people working in our administration who are fighting to make sure that our democracy is protected. So it was a very, very pleasure to see the Solicitor General at work today. It seemed to me, as I listened to uh, the justices that have had issues with this law, is it seemed to me that it was all about the 20 years. It was all about the fact that it can, it can carry a heavy penalty, but of course, there's no minimum, uh, mandatory minimum sentence attached to it. And you get the feeling listening to it, if this statute had just had a five-year maximum sentence or less, that they wouldn't be there today. And the punishment, the amount of, of sentence that something can carry is irrelevant mm -hmm. to the interpretation of the statute. Deciding what the punishment should be is actually Congress's job. The court's job, by contrast, is to understand how to read the statute and apply it to the facts, in this case, the extraordinary facts of January 6th. So I, I did take note of that, that they were focused on the consequences very much on who these protesters were, on the peculiarities, the fact that we have haven't had a situation like January 6th before. But look, we have had other kinds of criminals in our country um, try to disrupt our government and engage in things, whether it's witness tampering, threatening witnesses, destroying evidence, and trying to interrupt um, the certification of an election, to me, clearly falls under the statute at issue. Let's listen to what the Solicitor General actually said about sentencing and, and what the sentences have been uh, that have been issued in cases like this. We've looked at the average sentences here. There are about 50 that have gone to sentencing conviction and sentencing on just a 1512C2 is the only felony. So I think that's the best way to gauge it. This was when the sentencing enhancement did apply. So the ranges were higher. The average sentence among the approximately 50 people is 26 months of imprisonment, and the median has been 24 months. So there's, there's no reasonable argument to be made that the statutory maximum here is driving anything with respect to sentencing. Uh, also, I, the other thing I heard from uh, Justice Gorsuch and others was the, was the attempt to compare what happened on January 6th to other forms of protest uh, that, that seemed, it seemed like they just didn't grasp the singularity of January 6th. The justices asked a number of questions about other hypotheticals. For example, if someone were to interrupt the court, the Supreme Court's own business, for example, and they had to adjourn um, about other kinds of protest activity or disruption. One of the things the United States Solicitor General drove home again and again, which is incredibly important for Americans to understand, is the statute requires that the, def that the criminal defendant have acted corruptly, wrongfully, knowingly. So if we had somebody who was protesting, thought they were protected by the First Amendment, but they actually weren't, that wouldn't be covered by this. The emails from Mr. Fisher, um, the messages he sent about the gallows, sending Democratic Congress members to the gallows, all of those emails, all of that evidence is necessary to bring a case under this statute. So there are very, very strong protections here to make sure that somebody who's expressing an opinion, even an unpopular opinion politically, would never face prosecution under this statute. You have to intend to stop the government from conducting its official business and to be acting intentionally to do that. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.